In this Take Enter tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how you can create nested lists inside Take Enter. Now, I'm not talking about the nested menus, okay? When I talk about menu, I mean the kind of thing that shows up at the top of your, of your window, you know, like this. And then, you know, we can create nested menus in there. That's an, a menu. I'm talking about a nested list, a nested drop down list, like, you know, like the ones you see in a combo box or in a option menu widget or similar widgets inside Take Enter. So there are a bunch of widgets like that and they display a simple drop down list of, you know, values of options that you can select. But what if we want to create a nested list within that list? So that's what this video is all about. Okay, if you're interested in seeing how to create nested menus, we have a separate video on that and I'll link it down in the description below so you can go check that out. Okay, but for now, let's focus on the nested drop down list. Okay, so I'm going to create our option menu widget here first. Okay, that's what we're going to be using. It's the only widget that's really capable of actually doing this this entire drop down list effect and I'll actually explain why why the combo box for example couldn't do this uh, I'll explain that by the end of this video okay so let's just continue create the option menu widget pass and master all right and now what we need to do is create a variable a variable for this widget and this variable is going to store the currently selected value okay if you're familiar with taking care you should already know this part Okay, then the third parameter here is going to be a default value. We'll just call it default for now. Then I'm just going to, I'm just going to pack this in. Okay, now the option menu widget, I need to actually explain some theory over here. The option menu widget is actually a child class of the menu widget inside Take Hinter. So they actually share a lot of, you know, functionality and functions. So what we can actually do the same way that we nest menus within menus we can nest menus within option menu because option menu is also kind of a menu that's been repurposed as a button a button like widget a combo box like widget okay now i know this is confusing so just keep watching and you'll definitely understand what's going on i'm going to create a menu object here and this menu object is going to be uh, is going to be from our option menu widget because it has a, a menu object within it, okay? So we'll return that menu object here, and then we'll start creating different menus. Then we're gonna append those menus into our option menu widget. Now, I know this is tricky, but again, just watch. Okay, watch carefully, and it'll all make sense, okay? So what we'll do here is create a new menu. We'll call it submenu, or call it sublist, okay? That makes a little more sense, sublist1. Then we'll do tk.menu, then its parent is going to be, you know, menu, our, our main menu, okay? Then we'll do menu.addCascade, okay? This is the function for nesting menus within menus, okay? So we'll do, we'll, we need to give it a, a label, so we can call it uh, list1 for now. Then we can do menu is equal to sub list one. Okay, and great, it's cascaded. And I'm just gonna duplicate this over here for another menu. Okay, so we've now added two menus to our widget. And if I run this code now, you can see that we have these over here. That's pretty cool, right? We have our default value, we have list one and list two. They're empty right now. These are empty because we didn't add in add any options to them. So let's do that right now, shall we? So we'll do sublist one dot add command. And they, these are the different options. We can add cascade, add check button, add command, add radio button, add separator. And if you want to learn more about these, we've covered them in our menu tutorial because these are all, you know, all about the menu. Okay, we're not talking about that in detail right now. We're just talking about how we can nest lists within lists right now in this tutorial. So we're not going to focus on that. So over here, I'm just going to do add command. And then I need to give this a label as well. So I can call this list one option one. I know these names are kind of name, uh, are kind of lame, but you know, you can come up with something better, I'm sure. So we'll do command now. Okay. And over here, 
you know what, we'll leave that empty for now. Okay, I'll show you this step by step. So let's just add another option here. And let's do the same for sublist two. Okay, we've added two options into both lists. So if we run this code now, we can actually see these two options. All right, cool, right? Uh, but obviously we're still not done. There's still a few problems over here, actually. First of all, there's this weird thing over here. It's called the, the tear off. I'm not sure exactly why it's there. Uh, I think we can disable it like this, false. I don't like that, honestly. So I just always disable it inside my menus. So if we uh, put this over here, and we can see that it's gone, okay? Great. Uh, yeah, cool. All right, um, one more thing. The default value is not showing up inside our uh, option menu widget when we run it. Hold on. And let me just drag this over here a bit. Ah, come on. All right, so it's not showing up here inside. It's showing up in the list, but it's not showing up inside the widget itself. So we can actually just fix this by moving this inside our variable and then just doing var.get over here. Uh, hold on, just gotta, what, what, what is wrong with this right now? Thing has no attribute root. All right, hold on, let me just undo that. I'm not sure where the problem is being caused. Okay, weird. Could have sworn that was working earlier. Okay, you know what, just ignore that because I actually have a better solution to this than I'm actually gonna show you guys in a minute. Um, actually, let me just go ahead and show you that right now. I'm going to, from tkinter, import ttk. Now ttk, the ttk version of the option menu widget is actually better in my opinion, because one, it actually improves its look, and two, we actually get to do something rather interesting. We can just, uh, you know, put this value over here, default, and it's gonna show up over here. Okay, it's gonna show up in here, but it won't show up inside the list, which is actually what I want. Okay, so uh, we can even leave this blank, and you cannot do this on the normal TK, the normal Takinger version. Okay, so this is only possible in the TTK version. Okay, but it looks a bit weird leaving it blank right now, so that's why we'll just uh, you know put something in there called placeholder value. Okay, cool, right? So yeah, that's why I prefer the TTK version. All right, that looks good. So one more thing, we need to actually, because uh, if you click on these buttons right now, nothing happens. Okay, let, let me just show you that again. If we click on these buttons, if I click on list one, option one, nothing happens, okay? So that's kind of anticlimactic. We need to actually link a command Okay, we need to link a command to this this you know list to this command. Okay, because th these are commands, and these commands have a command parameter that links to a function, right? So we need to link each command to a function. We have four commands here, so we need to link them. Okay, so we could define four separate functions, but that's going to be a real pain. A really easy way of doing this is just to use lambda instead. We can do var dot set, and uh, over here we can just set it to. Uh, hold on, let me just. Um, we don't have a place where we have these stored or anything, so let me just adjust these a bit. Honestly, these names are kind of stupid, so let's just change those names, okay? And. I'm going to maybe call this option three and this option four, okay? And I'm gonna copy paste this over here, 
Okay, that's but that's better. All right, so I'm just gonna move this a bit back so it's all in the in the same window. Okay, now I'm gonna copy paste this for the others and just change the labels over here. And by the way, you can create a separate function over here instead of using lambda, but this is just an easy way of doing it. Okay, a short way of doing it. If you don't need to add in extra code, like validation or something, if you don't need to do, to do that, the, this approach is just fine. So if we now run our code, and let me just increase the padding on this because I'm getting really tired of that small window. So if I run this now, we get our nice menu and we get our options over here. And if I click on option one, it actually gets reflected in there. If I click on, wait, why is this option one? Hold on. That's weird. I'm pretty sure I made a silly mistake here. Ah, yes, there we go. A good thing we changed the names, so I caught that mistake. Okay, so here we can see option three and we can select option four, select option one, select option two. Pretty cool, right? This is basically our nested list, our nested drop-down list. And this is only possible with option menu because option menu is, you know, inherited from the menu class. So yeah, that's the end of our tutorial. And if you have any questions, any suggestions, any feedback, let me know in the comment section below. Definitely subscribe to the channel because we have a lot more co content like this, take into your content like this that we keep releasing. Okay, a lot of helpful advice, a lot of helpful tips and tricks like the one in this video that you won't normally find. Okay, so yeah, definitely follow up and we'll see you guys in the next video. Later.